else? What else did he play in? He was in Morbius. Okay, that's why you don't like him because he didn't like <laughs> no, Morbius. I love him. He didn't like Morbius. Oh, he didn't like. Yeah, Morbius. so he didn't like Morbius. So he's well. Morbius is bad. I like Morbius. <laughs> <laughs> No, you did not. Yeah. So, <laughs> you guys have to understand. <laughs> oh I don't God. do anything else. So it's like if if I'm not working, <laughs> move like if a movie isn't good, I've literally wasted an hour and a half. <laughs> you, you did not like Morbius. <laughs> so this is the clip. <laughs> Him saying that he likes Morbius is the fucking clip. Yes. Dude. Another episode of Adversity Kings. We have special guest. Am I saying it right, James Webb? That's that's correct. Yeah, Classic. well yeah. done. Easier name. Yeah. So, <laughs> yeah. James, introduce yourself, brother. Uh, I'm James. Um, I've been in the entertainment industry my whole life. Yeah. Uh, kind of just mostly background stuff, all background stuff, really. Um, started out in the burbs. You know, Wheaton. No, dude, I've only been here almost two years. Oh, well, and good. I've stayed like right here in Lombard. Well, there's nothing to do in Wheaton, so uh, okay. but uh, but they had a they had an old theater there, the Wheaton Grand Theater. Okay, I got a job there when I was like 15, 16, 17. What what inspired there. this? Movies? Like what did what the what inspired career? You? Yeah. Well, really, I mean, for you to get in a theater, uh, for you to start working at a theater, at fifteen. I mean, honestly, it was just kind of, it was all like circumstance, really. I was just a young kid looking for a job. Okay, so there wasn't like, yo, dude, and I love movies. I mean, so, so I loved, I loved the live music scene. Okay, so I was big on like the metal scene when I was a little kid. Yeah, um, I was an angry little kid. You yeah, know? same. And like, yeah, and like, in in just hanging out with those people. A lot of my friends were like yeah. friends with bands and stuff like that. So I. You know, I kind of came up doing that, and then uh, there was like a, a metal, like the the local shows were doing like, uh, or the local bands were doing like metal shows around town, and I got a job at this theater because I was like, oh, this might be a cool spot yeah. to just see them for free or whatever. Yeah. Um, and then yeah, this dude Paul Warshower, uh, this like fifty five year old dude who like just loved theaters, saw me. I was working at some. Uh, so I'm like, there's this famous little popcorn shop in Wheaton. Yeah. It's like the it's like the size of a hallway. Uh, and he came in one day and saw me working in there, and he was just like, "Oh, I like your style, kid. Yeah, why don't you come work for me at the theater on the corner?" It was yeah. I, I kept I forgot how all this happened, and like he was yeah. like, and I was like, "Of course, dude, let's go." Yeah, and then that was kind of it, and like uh, and yeah, I just kind of stayed in that that live entertainment world my my whole life. I just kind of saw it. after that. You know, I moved to the city some years later yeah. proper and just sought out theater jobs. Okay. Um, yeah. So before we get carried away, we're a smaller podcast. I've been trying a different approach <laughs> sure. where people plug shit at the end. Sure. But I feel like people only listen to Joe Rogan to the end. So for sure. us, <laughs> okay. plug all your shit you want to plug in right now because this might be the max out for, <laughs> for um, our listeners. Okay, fair enough. Hey, uh, uh, whatever camera, uh, if you uh, if you have Netflix, I don't know if you've heard of this thing, Netflix, uh, The I, I just directed, edited, produced pretty much everything there is to do with this special. Uh, Sam Morrill, uh, one of the best comics working today. Uh, same time tomorrow came out September first. Uh, it should still be on your home pages too if you if you want to check it out. But number, uh, I think it was it was trending. And it, I it's we we were on new releases trending number one. I I'm I don't know how that works. Uh, if it's like if it has something to do with what you like and it puts it further forward in what you're trying. I could is. see that because when I go like real hardcore with watching specials, yeah. it'll show a just bunch, a bunch of specials, a bunch of specials. But we were definitely uh, for new releases. We were at least in my uh, queue, number one spot for the la for the first four days. Um, but you'll hopefully hopefully you'll see it. Uh, Sam Morell, same time tomorrow on Netflix. Um, and then yeah, check out. I mean, just Google like Chicago comedy or look up. Uh, Hashtag Chicago Comedy on Instagram, just and just start watching Chicago comics. I don't have anything personally to plug. Yeah. You don't do any like contract work, are you like? I mean, I just I go where the work is, okay. but like I'm my job is to make other people look and sound good. So yes. like, and, and and most of those people are Chicago comedians. So yep. like, I, I I stand Chicago. So comedy. you probably generate business more word of mouth. Like people are like, hey, oh, he did yeah. my shit. He could do your shit. Hundred percent, dude. Yeah. That I mean, the, the last what was it? I think uh, maybe a year, a little over a year ago, I finally like. Made a website for myself, yeah. Chicago dot studio. Uh, if you're looking for it, it's a fire website. Uh, I, yeah. Did I? I couldn't believe I got the URL. But yeah, and that's kind of that houses. I need to update it. That's not even on there yet. The special, um, but just like all the, the past work I've done, South by Southwest stuff. And is this your biggest project by far? Yeah. Is it your most favorite? You, so far, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I think so. I yeah. mean, it's just it's you know, I mean it's it's kind of this is. 
I, this specific thing is, I think, why you you get into it, you know, to yep. work with the biggest people and, and be on the, you know, the biggest streaming service that exists. Yeah. Um, you know, and, and hopefully do a good enough job where people will hire you again. Yeah, so, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So now where'd you, you grew up in Wheaton? Grew up in Wheaton. Um, I was a little shithead kid. Uh, What'd your parents do? Uh, my dad's in, uh, like, he's he does some big fancy job out there and my mom is just a you know just a mom stay-at-home mom yeah um you know they got divorced when i was a teenager uh and i stayed with my dad my brother with my mom and while my dad would always go away on business yeah and so he'd leave me at the house to just kind of fend for myself uh and but before he would go, we would always like marathon a bunch of stuff on Comedy Central. Yeah. So you just watch Comedy Central presents at night. A little Insomniac with David Tell after that. Yeah. Uh, wake up, premium blends on. So you're watching comedy just constantly all day. Me and my dad, and that's kind of where all this came from. And yeah. then some years later, I get a job at a theater, and then 20 years later, here we are. Yeah. Yeah. Dope. So now, who were you closest with growing up? Uh, I mean, my dad, yeah, I was around my dad the most, like, he, yeah. you know, it was me and him from 14 until I moved out 20, 21, something like that. So, yeah. Yeah. And so, and then when did you like full time start working with comedians and like doing all the media and everything? So that was, I got my first like taste of like live stand up. I had never seen live stand up until I actually moved to Chicago. It's proper. like a thousand times better than a special. It's the, be it's the best. Dude. Yeah. There's nothing like just the energy in the room and like it's so awesome. People fucking up on yeah. stage or like, you know, I, I'm not condoning heckling at all. Don't fucking heckle you people. But yeah. like if but when it happens and it's handled like correctly in the moment. There is nothing else on earth like I've it. never seen anybody bomb because I've only gone to like huge. You got to go to an open mic, dude. Yeah. Go to an open mic. Do you yeah, go to, there's a specific, I'll shout out an open mic. There's an open mic down uh, in, uh, I think it's in, I think it's in Lakeview, uh, Chicago called Trigger Warning. Yeah. And it's run by Let's like the, the, yeah, look up Trigger Warning, Trigger Warning open mic. Like this, is, it's like the Apollo theater of open mics. Like you go there to bomb. Okay. And if if it's it's the biggest like trial by fire yeah. uh, comedy thing in Chicago, and if you if you crush at trigger warning, you're like a god for a week. Like everyone, yeah. it's like it's your like because it's impossible to do because the whole time everyone's like talking shit during your set. Like they yeah. encourage like bad behavior. Yeah. Um. But yeah, you got to go to an open mic. <laughs> or just a local showcase. Chicago has a, a million, like, really, really good local I always showcases. ask Aiden, like, because I hate going anywhere outside of Lombard, but, like, what's around here? You gotta go, uh, in, in, the, in the burbs? Yeah, like, within, like, 10, 15 minutes. Of I here. don't know about 10 minutes. Still not Friday at Two Brothers Roundhouse in Aurora. Yeah. Uh, they do a Thursday night show run by uh, Matt Drufke, Mike Wiley, uh, a whole bunch of really great, great comics. Um, yeah, it's called Still Not Friday. Um, there's stuff in the burbs, man. I mean, the, the Chicagoland area is is chock full of talented folks who like uh, so many comedians come through here. Yeah, and and that's kind of what we're known for too. Is like you come to Chicago to get good, and then you go to New York or L.A., which yeah. is unfortunate. We've had a lot of comedians on here, dude. Yeah, I saw Vic Pagna was on one of the last yeah, ones. Yeah, we had and, Vic uh, on. We had Dan Cass. Dan Cass, he was a great Dan's one. Dan's the man, dude. I love yeah, Dan. Yeah, he was hilarious. It's really cool. Who was your favorite that we've done so far? Um, I like Kenyon. Kenyon, Kenyon, Kenyon Adam check. Yeah, he's he's he was the hilarious. man too. Yeah, we we have so many just he, hyper talented people. He blew up on my TikTok. People said he sounds like Will Ferrell. <laughs> what they say he sound like Will Ferrell, I think, or something. Sure, yeah. Some one of those guys or Seth Rogen. I think they said Seth Rogen. One of those. Yeah, things. I can, he's a little yeah, a little nasally, a little. Yeah. but yeah, he's he's such a good comic too. They're all all three of those was, hilarious. Yeah, they're great. It on was stage. a great podcast. Yeah. So now now growing up for you. Um, as you're going through school and shit like that, mm. what was what was that like? Elementary, middle, oh, just growing God, up. I, I mean, what I, made you you? What made me me? I didn't really, you know, I'm 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 in my late thirties now. Yeah, and I think, you know, I'm not a wise old man or anything by any means, but I I don't. At least for me, I had I didn't really become me until like my mid twenties, I don't think. Yeah. 
like high school was a blur. Again, I was like, I was a shitty kid. I was on the Ritalin and all that stuff. I barely remember it. Yeah. Um, you know, I was just, I was a fucking disaster. Uh, and then I got out of high school and I got into the world and I like, you know. Why do you think you were nuts in high school? I don't know. Anything to pinpoint? Like, oh man, maybe it was this. I don't know. I mean, you know, it's. I was nuts in high school. Maybe I was bored. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. I was I was one of those kids who like, you know, I, I, I fucked around in class and I just, I didn't really, you know, I just didn't fit in. Yeah. I got expelled, so like I yeah I I went I'm not, I'm not like no for over sure here, like, like judging I'm like no no no, no. it's just like I, I was always trying fighting. to like yeah me too I was yeah. like I was I'm like trying to pinpoint like you know what I don't know if there was a catalyst I was just I just never I was hyper yeah you know yeah um, I got girl crazy pretty quick too so yeah. like the hormones and stuff didn't really help yeah um, and I just didn't have anywhere to kind of focus that attention yeah um because you know traditional traditional work doesn't do it for me now and yeah. that's kind of how school was like i you know i'm I, you know i'm not a dummy but i definitely did not do well yeah in school. same yeah i did horrible because it's just like it's just the the, the rigidity and all that yep. so um yeah i don't know and then when i got out of the world and i i, I entered this live entertainment thing that's you, there's so much freedom in that and you're, you're able to express yourself creatively or help others express themselves creatively artistically yeah and that's that kind of i think settled me down or at least foc- honed my focus on um being productive yeah i was very unproductive as a kid yeah, yeah. so as you graduate high school would you go into after that i tried uh cod college of dreams out here uh college of dupage uh, i did that <laughs> for a while uh you know just trying to fucking just trying to be the, the you know the average american boy yeah doing the thing and it just yeah i was like this sucks dude so uh, my dad moved back to california i'm from california originally okay um he moved back to cali for work and he was like you can either come with us and live in my house or you can move to chicago and i was like boy i'm fucking out of here so yeah like, straight to the city with my boy steve uh and then yeah it just started I mean, that's where life started, just hunting for work. Yeah. Yeah. Did you have any siblings? Yeah, I have a brother, younger brother, Nick. Yeah. Um, he's out in Pittsburgh now. That's where I'm from. You're from Pittsburgh, really? Yeah. I was just out there with Sammy a couple weeks ago. Beautiful country. Yeah. Oh, my God. Yeah, beautiful. it's solid. So nice. Uh, Mount, uh, what is it, the, the Mount, Mount Washington up yep. there? Yep. It's gorgeous, man. It's, yeah. It's so pretty. Yeah, it's solid. Yeah. So what's your brother do out in Pittsburgh? Um, I think he works at, we don't talk much anymore. He's just, we're both so busy. Uh, yeah. I think he works for like Coca-Cola or something. Okay. Um, Dope. yeah. Dope. So for you, you moved back with your boy, Steve. Yeah. Are you guys still boys today? Oh yeah. He came to the special tape and yeah. Okay. Oh, Dope. Yeah. So what's he do? Uh, Steve, uh, I think he works in, he was a liquor distributor for a long time. Okay. Um, yeah. He's, you know, salt of the earth dude. Yeah. Real nice guy. Dope. Um, but, uh, he went to school to be a film major and I didn't, and okay. then we kind of switched yeah. <laughs> professions. I <Yeah>. guess. <laughs> <You know? laughs> I feel that. No, Steve's the man. So you said, uh, real big into metal bands growing up. So like who was, oh, dude, who like, was your favorite? I mean, uh, God, dude, this is so embarrassing. I, I loved, uh, you know, static X. I don't know. Wayne Static, Rip, uh, Static X. I mean, all the classics, the, yeah. like uh, like Ozzy Osbourne. I was going to say, that's probably what I'd have yeah, some Ozzy I went Osbourne. Yeah, I went to Warp Tour a couple times, okay. uh, Slipknot. Uh, yeah, I got their uh, shit. Old Metallica. Yeah, I probably have old Metallica. New shit sucks. Yeah, I have all, um, all old. I, I, don't, I don't even consider it metal. I just, I like individual like songs, feelings. Sure, that's fine. With the song. Yeah. Let me see if I have. I'm a big Lamb of God guy now, though. Lamb of God fucking rips. I have Inter Sandman from Sure, Metallica. yeah, it's classic. Who doesn't yeah. like Inter Sandman? Yeah, I and it's. I think I got a lot of Bon Jovi. I don't know if okay. you consider that metal. That's one. you know, it's hair metal. Yeah, <laughs> it's a ver- it's a kind of metal. Soft. It's a, it's a breed of metal. It's so soft. Yeah, Joey goes hard, bro. Right? Oh yeah. Right? Shit. Fucking yeah, dude. No, but there's nothing wrong with Bon Jovi. So what about what about now? You still like the old music yeah. and everything like that? Oh, yeah. Just tap into that. I don't really like any like. New rap, new like any of like the newer music. I don't know what it is. I just don't like it. I mean, I dude, fucking Young Gravy is like the greatest thing to happen to. Do you know Young Gravy? No. Please get into Young Gravy. Is this is this Y U N G Gravy? 
He's this Minnesota kid, like young white boy. Yeah. Raps about fucking MILFs. Yeah. And like just stealing people's game. It, it's all like. Is it like funny more it's than. It's funny. In, okay. It's all funny. But he's like, he's got his producer's incredible. He's got great, insane beats. And he's like, he has flow. And he's just like fun to listen to. I wonder if I can get him on the podcast. D- dude, if you get gravy in here, <laughs> I mean, Jesus Christ, you're you're the king if you get gravy. Yeah, I mean, in here. He, this would be hard. He's got two million followers. Yeah. He's going to want to check. Yeah. He's. No, young gravy rips. I like the new stuff. I just. I'm not picky, dude. Okay. I'll listen to anything. My little sister follows him. <laughs> She's got good taste, man. It's fucking uh, <laughs> great. If she pops out any kids, you better watch yeah. out. He's a milf hunter, dude. Yeah, fuck. So, <laughs> fucking little gravy no, dude, over yeah. here. Yeah, dude. Young gravy fucking rules. Um, yeah, all the new stuff is cool. I like what the kids are doing. Yeah. You know? I like to stay as relevant as I can with, with yeah. just the stuff that's coming out. I'm selective with it. I, I just found this old ass song I've been bumping. Keep pushing by Rio C something. Don't play it. They'll demonetize. I know. It. I'm not gonna play it. Okay. Rio Speedwagon. Oh, Rio Speedwagon. Rio Speedwagon. Okay. Keep hell pushing, yeah. Bro. Keep been, pushing. Yeah, that shit's hard. Okay. Um. So, college doesn't work out, or did you graduate college? No, God, no. Okay. So college Absolutely doesn't work not. out. Yeah. You're living with Steve. What's that transition? What's that season look like? I mean, dude, like, yeah, we lived in Pilsen, fucking. What was it like? Twelve years ago, or something like that, or thirteen years ago. Um, so you know, was was very. It was not what it is now. Yeah. Very undeveloped, uh, very ungentrified, I should say. Yeah. Um, it was Pilsen was was true Pilsen. Like shootings. Right? Yeah, it was. You know, it was fun. Chicago. All, like, I feel like people blow it out of proportion. I've been out of the city many times and have never seen a shooting. It, you know. I know it's a dangerous. There's it, dangerous places, but I've. It's. It is. It is all. Well, until. <sighs> You be careful talking about this. I think it's all fairly localized to specific areas. Yes. All of the bad whatever that our parents and like these fucking like, yeah. right wing assholes talk about, like yeah. oh, Chicago is like it's you can go to Millennium Park and see the bean. Like you're yeah. fine, dude. Like yes. you can go get coffee at, at midnight and you you're fine. Yes. Like you're not people aren't just rolling well. I mean, now it's kind of like the worst thing is the sometimes homeless can be a little aggressive. Like my one boy, like yeah, but that's only downtown. Yeah, and Chicago is like downtown sucks. Yeah, who's hanging out downtown? Right? Do you? What do you like? If you live in like you know Milwaukee or something, then fine, go downtown. Yeah. If you live in Springfield, go downtown. That's fine. But like Chicago, like if you live here, even if you live in like the burbs. Downtown is a waste of your time. Yes, I hate going like, there. Like you go to go to Wicker Park where we filmed the special Sam Earl, same time tomorrow on Netflix. Uh, <laughs> go uh, go to you know Wrigleyville's fun, Lakeview's yes. fun. Yes, a lot of dude. The Boys Town neighborhood is great. I got a lot of free drinks, boy. When I was fucking twenty one, just yeah. hitting on gay dudes drinking for free. It was great. <laughs> uh, but yeah, like there's there's so many fun areas in Chicago that are that are safe and that are yes. that are no not no homeless. That's all of that is all of that is downtown. Yeah. And the dangerous stuff is all it's like in specific areas that you wouldn't want to go anyway. Yeah. You know, occasionally like the carjacking thing is that's real. Yeah. I got talked out of buying a TRX because he was like, yeah, this is probably going to get stolen. I'm, yeah. And I was like, fuck it. I won't get it. Don't get it. <laughs> yeah. Or I was like, or, I don't need it. Or just, you know, don't go to places where you, you might get, you know. Just, yeah. Take a look around. And I don't know where like anybody in their right mind. People are like, well, "Don't leave a bunch of money in the car." It's like, who leaves money yeah, just sitting to, out in the car? Yeah. Like, <laughs> even if I was nice, in a nice neighborhood, and, yeah, it's like <laughs> all this money on the da- here's like, my jewelry. Yeah, it's like, well, that makes uh, duh. I'm not gonna leave all yeah. this shit out in my car. I mean, you'd be surprised at how dumb people could be. I've, yeah. had, I've had my shitty. I had a Lincoln Continental, uh, like a '97 Lincoln Continental, like the the most piece of shit car you could ever drive. Uh, parked in a nice area. I lived in Lincoln Park at the time. And uh, it was parked on Stockton, which is like, it's off the main road. So it's kind of like near the Lincoln Park Zoo. So it's uh, the only purpose of this road is to drive past the Lincoln Park Zoo and then finally merge onto a normal street. I think at Fullerton is where it goes back. Uh, sorry, the hyper no, you're shit. Uh, but uh, but yeah, so like, and Stockton's always got like cars lined up because it's free parking, which is impossible in the city of Chicago. And like one day I, I went over there and I had maybe 
maybe three dollars and change in the fucking in the little cup yeah and i went the, like one morning i my window was broken and all of my change was gone and that was it like yeah. and it's like dude you're like you're fucking breaking into cars for three dollars you can find that on the side of the road find, yeah you could fucking yeah like but it's chicago chicago's fun dude yeah i love i love it so much it's really grown on me I, initially i was like i'm not going out of the city i don't i I personally am more introverted and I hate sure. driving. I'm like, I love driving. It's an hour there, an hour back. And I'm like, my first two years selling insurance, I had to drive everywhere. You know what I mean? So sure. I think I logged 150,000. Oh, that'll do it. Yeah. I think I did 150,000 miles over a year and a half, two yeah. years. And I calculated it out. I was like, mile per hour, sure. blah, blah, blah. It was like 93 days. I was in a car. So I was like, I try not to be driving. It's that's, like it's a lot. Yeah, so I'm like, especially in a short, short time frame. Yeah, I remember having a big Gatorade bottle. I just piss in the car. Of course, you know what yeah. I mean? like, <laughs> yeah. Cars for me is like a sensitive, sensitive subject. So, sure. but that's right. why I love Chicago because public transit is great. I love the scooters, dude. I've been riding those all summer. I love those scooters. It's amazing. Yeah, that's a, it's the, my oh, favorite. That's I will find an excuse to go down there now. Yeah, just because of just those so scooters. You can ride around. Yeah, some lines, like, yeah. I'm like, fuck, they're wonderful. Yeah. Scooters. I and rode tacos. one today to get my hair cut. It's great. Yeah, I love them. I love them. <laughs> so you're down there. What is what's that? So you're with Steve and everything like that. Are you, are you getting Pilsen. into media and everything? No. Like I, I mean, dude, 21. I'm like struggling. Like I, you know, I had a. I worked at the United Center for a while. Like in the the little fan shop for the Hawks and the Bulls. Yeah. Um. I, you know, I was just. I've done every like menial job that there is. Derek to, Rose was probably big when you were working there. Uh, yeah, he just, he was like just signed Patrick Kane and, and Jonathan Taves were just signed to the Hawks too. So I, it yeah. was like the first, it was like right before they won the cup in 2010. Okay. Um, That's fucking sweet. I think I worked there from like 2007 or something. So I, I, I got to, I got to see the Hawks like become the Hawks, Yeah, you know? Um, and then, uh, so that was cool. And then I found a theater job, finally found a fucking theater job. Uh, at this now defunct spot called the Chicago Center for the Performing Arts. And it was yeah. on, uh, if you're from Chicago, it was on uh, Halstead and Chicago Avenue. And it was like, it was so cool. Like, it, you know, so the theater I first worked at was like a standard, you know, kind of like open floor plan pit. If everyone's like in there at once, you could fit maybe like 300 people standing for like concerts and stuff. Mm. The Chicago Center was like a real like theater theater, like 350 seats, like bolted to the floor in the round with a big, beautiful stage. You could build anything on and their main space downstairs. You had a nice studio theater, 150 yeah. seats. And then these two cabaret rooms and in these two cabaret rooms, they would do stand up comedy every night. And I had no idea this was going on when I applied for the job. I was like, oh, a theater, great. Yeah. And then once I started, you know, getting into the rhythm of things, like the, I'd see all these comedians come in and I just like, once the shows are like up, if you work at a theater, you kind of have nothing to do. So you can like walk around and figure, like just kind of have fun, like watch yeah. a show for free. So I would go into these, these open mics and these like book showcases and all this stuff and just watch and just be like, and see comedy live for the first time, really see comedy live. And that's kind of where the bug just like hit me. And I was like, oh shit, like I want to be part of this somehow. Yeah. You know? So how old are you there? Probably 20, 23, I think. Yeah. So it's about, it's about like 14, 15 years ago. And then what's that 14 year time frame look like? Uh, just landing gigs, starting off. Like, who was your who was your first person you really latched onto that helped you kind of elevate through the so through the gigs? I remember one of the first people I ever uh, talked to. It was it was three guys: uh, Keith Pazel, Todd Massey, and Ken Whitzkill. They were all comedians who would go to this open mic or like whatever. They were booked on the shows too. Uh, you know, they would help put shows together. Yeah. Um, at the at the theater. And then once the theater closed, and you know we'd go downstairs, smoke weed, like hang yeah. out, like do whatever, be bad kids together. Uh, and then the theater got bought out by one of the tenants. It was a church, like a mega church thing. <laughs> Fucking. <laughs> and so like they, we found out through a tweet. By the way, we were all at work, and then one of the fucking social media people for the church tweeted that they had acquired the building. Our bosses didn't even know. They like bought it out from under us and kicked us out. Like, and we That's were all insane. just like, what the fuck? So we were, we were gone. And I can't, sorry if I'm swearing. No, too much. you're absolutely okay. good. Um, but we were all like, we were gone in a month and we had no idea this was going to happen. Yeah. And so, you know, of course they're not only like whatever, do your church and it's, it's city church now and it's fine. Do your thing, whatever, you know, mazel tov. But like you dismantled like a, a 
uh, artistic gathering space for so many people. Yeah. Like there was a, there, there were so many like big, there's a, a, a big producer in Chicago, Mikey O, Mike Okendo. What am I like? idols i look up to this guy he's he's got the entire latino market locked down for comedy yeah it sells out every fucking show like, has, Ga- like gabriel iglesias d- he probably has his number yeah like every but like and he's he's really helped kind of grow the latino space in in comedy and like make it like a, a, a really like important function for chicago comedy over the last like i mean he's been in operation god knows how long but as long as i've ever known him he was one of the main tenants there yeah giving so many people chances uh, and then like all of these theater companies had nowhere to go. And then of course, so the, the edge comedy club was what the, like the, the stuff that I was hanging out at in the cabaret rooms, yeah. that was what that was called. And the edge was running shows, sometimes two shows a night, like every night of the week Yeah, and all like hundreds of people just gone. And so me, Keith, uh, Kenny and Todd were like, well, what the fuck do we do now? Like, where do we go? Cause back then Chicago did not have the scene that it has now. Chicago yeah. is a fucking scene like a beautiful vibrant like why do people want to go to new york when it's so banging here like why is this the practice ground there's no money here why not like if there's so many people there's why 10 million not? people in the metropolitan area of chicago it, it blows my mind when i've had so many comedians on they're like oh, we're gonna go to new york and i'm like well what is it an extra million people there like why it's is it four million and and yes and it's it's because look and this is the I've been saying this. So I've been at this, I've been in the Chicago scene for 15 years. So since the CCPA, the yeah. Chicago center closed down and, uh, I've, I've said ad nauseum, uh, when I was naive, I was, I said it. And now I, I still, I say it less, but I, I do mean it. Uh, don't move, stay here. Yeah. Imagine, imagine, and it would be it would be now knowing now like what it actually means in the industry and like all the the opportunities you get from leaving i get it but like so it would take a lot of self sacrifice for these people to stay but what if all yeah. the most talented comics who came up here stayed here we could build an industry around them and then they'd make all the money yes. and then they could put that money back into the community or at the very le- uh, least there like more people would know what was going on yes. and we could build a a like financial a structure yes. and a hub around these people. Yes. And so, you know, once once CCPA closed down, Keith, Keith Todd and Kenny approached me like, well, why don't we start our own stand-up showcase? Yeah. And we did, called Stand Up Stand Up. It turned 10 this year. Um, and in Wicker Park, we started it at a little bar. And we wanted that to be like, well, hey, guess what? Like, that was kind of our fuck you to the industry. Like, well, if, if no one else is going to, no one else is going to do it for you, so you have to do it. Yes. And that's kind of a Chicago – I think it's a very Chicago thing. Absolutely. Like a, the, the DIY, let's get it done yeah. mentality. So we started that show in this disgusting basement of a bar called The Crocodile back then. It's called District now. It's a beautiful oh spot. Um, yeah, it was awful. It was awful. The, the owner was a, a junky piece of shit. He was such an asshole. Um, <laughs> I hope he's dead. I really do. You can quote me on that. Go fuck yourself, Radic. But like he, they, but we started the show there, and like it, that was kind of the beginning of. So back then there were no showcases at yeah. all. There was comedians you should know, which is far and away the best showcase in the world uh, that's still running today. The Lincoln Lodge, uh, Zanies was around, but they weren't booking local people. They yep. were just bringing in you know headliners and stuff. Laugh Factory wasn't a thing yet. It yeah. was still a Lakeshore Theater, uh, and there was like Riot Comedy. Uh, which is, was a show that died. Um, and then there were a few open mics splintered around the city. So there was nothing for people to do. Yeah. So we were like, all right, well, let's start our own thing. So we started a thing in 2012 called Stand Up Stand Up at that shitty bar. And then, like, it, not because of us, but definitely around people saw that we were doing this. So like, okay, cool, we could do this too. And then all these other shows started popping up. And it was like, by 2016, there were, uh, no joke, like 10 shows every night going on yeah. around the city. And it was beautiful. And, and you, you saw, you, you could go to any neighborhood on any night of the week and see, you know, not the best comedy in the world, but comedy, which is all really all that matters. Yeah. And, and like these people are out there getting better and people are still leaving and going to New York and going to LA and going yeah. to all these other places because that's where the money is. Yeah, facts. But if they had stayed, yeah, it would have hurt their career. But 
we would have had these major talents that were, were helping cultivate. And you're kind of starting to see people not leave so much now. There's a comic who's, who's been at this. He was, he was one of Mikey O's guys, one of yeah. Michael Kendo's guys. His name is Joey Via Gomez, and he's been doing comedy in Chicago as long as I've been around. I think we started at the same time. Yeah. And, I mean, he's, he's a fucking power. Like, if he moved to New York or L.A. What's his IG? I'll give him a uh, I think it's Joey DeComic. Just look up Joey Via Gomez, V-I-L-L-A uh, Gomez. Definitely follow Joey. Um, yeah, Bill Burr gave him the like the he's got the Bill Burr seal of approval. He's done Comedy Central stuff with Bill. Um, yep, like he's the fucking Joey's one of these OGs that had every opportunity to move. Yep, every reason to move, and he stayed here. Is he the biggest in Chicago comedy? He's one of them. He's one of the heaviest hitters. Abby Sanchez too, another Mikey O guy. Uh, he's he's done HBO. Uh, a, a couple times he won. I think he won the uh, 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 comedy festival, like an HBO comedy festival. Yep. Like these, there's so many people who are still here now who have incredible accolades um, and and career achievements that had they moved, yeah, they'd probably be richer and more famous. But they chose not to. Choose some legacy sometimes. You know what I mean? Like yeah. have some balls and like build a name. Like. I can't tell you. I think I made a I made a major decision to transition into essentially the company that that I work with. It's like a franchise, like State Farm. Sure. So transitioning from not being a franchise owner and the money I was making just running an office, running a team, yeah, was half of what I'm making now. But the expenses are four times now as an owner. So technically, I make less. Like my 1099 yeah. looks insane, but I make less sure. than what I was making before. It pisses me off. But it, you know what I mean. But, but it's that's like, you but invested it's, in yourself. It's investing into yourself and building a name for yourself and and just. So I feel like some people just go for that quick dollar when it's like, I would love the opportunity, like the hunt and the chase. Sure. Sometimes it's just way more rewarding than an extra dollar you're going to get going to, to, let's just say, theoretically New York. But like you can translate that into any business or whatever you're pursuing out there. And so, Absolutely. It's a circumstantial thing, too. Yeah. Because there's a lot of times where you, you like, no matter what your drive or, or motivation is, you need the extra dollar no matter yeah. what. Yeah. You got bills to pay. Or maybe some the sick family member. Yeah. There's, so it's like I'm not like we're Life comes shaming up. people. Uh, well, well, no, yeah, of yeah. course. But it's like, it is it is a, you, I think you have to recognize that it is a, to some degree a privilege to be able to, to, to pursue that. Yeah. You know, I was in the, you know, I was a fucking, I was a bike delivery guy for Grubhub for three years. Yeah. I was a fucking, uh, you know, and, and, and after that I, I did Uber and Lyft for a minute and then my car broke down and then I did, like, I've, I've done, like I said, I've done every menial job there's just to make money. I, I quit my day job and like this is my this is my fourth year i'm 30 i'm 37 next month yeah and this is my fourth year doing comedy stuff full time yep i've only been at this for four years i think full-time. that's a big reason why mental health is messed up right now is everybody thinks you need to be like have your shit together at 18 like it's yeah like, there's no way hit eight, it's not possible unless like, your parents are like the kardashians like, yeah there's no fucking way you're and, gonna do that and and there's there's duality with everything i always tell people it's like with these extreme positives you perceive of yeah. like being a Kardashian and having everything handed to you, I couldn't even imagine the mental trauma and things of like not being a real human being. And there's positives. I'm not saying right. these are horrible humans. I have no idea. Well, it's also kind of sad because like how do you adjust yes. to reality? Right. You've only known, you know, caviar since you were born. Yeah, dude. You, were, you never <laughs> had to go a night with not eating. There's a, did you have you did you watch Arrested Development? <laughs> no. Great fucking show. It's one of the best comedies, you know, one of the best comedies of all time. It, why didn't you tell me this? And and Lucille Bluth is the mom I'm character. And she's like, she's this rich old lady. It's a it's a story about a family that's like hyper rich and unaware, except for one guy, the the son who's trying to keep it all together. And he's like <laughs> the most grounded character in the show. And the, the mom, Lucille Bluth, they run a banana stand. Yeah. It's one of their, like, grifts. Uh, and she's, they're, like, going over the price of inventory or whatever. And Lucille Bluth's like, what could a banana cost? $10? It's like, <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? Like, so, like, that's the kind of, but it's like, it's not her fault. She doesn't know. Right? Yeah. And that's the kind of mentality that, like, these Kardashian people and, like, I, I hate to brag on the Kardashian. Well, I don't because yeah, fuck no. them. They have everything. <laughs> yeah. But, like, how this. could they know? <laughs> yeah. Um, so it's, but, yeah, so it's a privilege to, to kind of be able to pursue that, especially young. Yes. Like at 18. I just feel so bad. I got a little sister that, that works for me, too, and I'm just, like, I can remember you know, her dropping out of college and feeling like her life's over. And I'm yeah. like, 
dude, you're 19 years you're old. You're free. Now. Yeah, exa exactly. There's you're a big free. thing with that too. Cause it's like, and I'm not going to rag on college, but at the same time I am because I, I, I feel like if I'll you're not going to be a doctor, just go look that shit yeah. up on YouTube, dude. It's not worth it now. It's clearly not worth it. Maybe if your parents are paying for it or you have a full ride. Yeah. But even take then. Take advantage of that. Yeah, take advantage of that. Go network. Go have fun. Take advantage of your don't full go, ride. Don't go 100 grand into debt. No. I'd rather to. go. That's why I tell people, I'm like, you're going to go spend four years there, go 100 grand into debt and have no skill set. Come sell insurance. I promise you, you're not going to go $100,000 into debt. Yeah, day. you'll make money. You're going to make money. It may suck your first year. You may, I made, I made good money my first year, but you, sure. might, you might make 20 grand your first year, but you're not going to go 20 grand in the hole. But the skill set of you being able to communicate with people, you could quit insurance after a year oh, and yeah. tell somebody I try to sell insurance for a year. And just your communication skills is going to be more valuable yeah, than the, the average valuable. person. I feel like that's really going to evolve over time because especially after this big, everybody got their school for free. I don't know how that all worked out. You know what I mean? It's like, oh, we're just going to waive your, your loans. It's like, I, that doesn't work. You know what I mean? Like, that doesn't work, like, over here. I'm it's cool like, with it. I Look, here's, as a, as a kid who, my dad, well, I, I, I paid half. Yeah. So my dad, my dad has like he 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 does well, and my dad is is my dad's a fucking man, the 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 only child uh, from the Bible Belt, didn't have nothing growing up. Was the Bible Belt like a like a Mormon reference? Like a, no, no, no. It's uh, <laughs> it's uh, like, the, like it's the it's the South and the Midwest, like but like <laughs> okay. like Oklahoma, Texas. All right, I was born in Arkansas, so I don't know if that's Arkansas part of the Bible is part Belt. of the Bible Belt. Yeah, okay. yeah, yeah. So all the like you know all the preachy like we're gonna fucking you know we're we love Jesus like yeah. those people. He came from nothing. Got a job as a kid uh, at at a, at his company at the bottom and worked his way literally all the way to the top just worked and he, he like he he has that drive and motivation uh but it probably took like a 15 year grind yeah well to like to like really be set he's you know also I mean? he's also supremely intelligent like he's he's one of the most intelligent people i've ever met yes um but yeah he's like you know he's he's got that thing uh and and he you know that i as far as i know he didn't go to college or like yeah. or a university at least yeah. And he fucking did it. Yes. You know, you don't need college. No. Unless, like you said, you, you want to be, you can't be a doctor on YouTube. Yeah. No. You can, I'm not I, letting a YouTube person cut into me. Oh, please God. No. <laughs> I'm, well, I'm, you know, no. Uh, I. What about the gangster doctors? Real quick, let's pause because I've seen it. Yeah. Where, where do those motherfuckers go to school? You know, maybe right. they actually go to school and they're like, ah, fuck this. I don't want to pay for a doctor. They just insurance. hack the Harvard medical yeah. like, rec, like uh, lessons and shit. No, they I watch don't Grey's Anatomy. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> no, I learned this on Nip Talk. Yeah, Ten Blade. Um, but yeah, I, I, I truly, yeah, like, I agree with you 100%. But the student loans thing, I, you know, I, I think, I think that. Because a lot of people did kind of it. It sucks if you already paid off your loans, you didn't get that break. Yeah, it does. That does suck. I totally get that. But I think it's important to kind of like use the empathy that you would have had for yourself. It, I always tell people, if it was you, you wouldn't be upset. You with wouldn't. It. Be. Like if it was me and I You'd had ten grand like, erased. Oh my god, dude! I wouldn't be upset. But I see everybody else talking about fuck you, and I'm like, oh, I gotta join that boy. Sure. Like, fuck you. I just so many people got. God, fuck it. Like, these companies are predatory, man. Oh, my these God. These loan companies are fucking outrageous. Insane. That's why, I, that's one of the reasons why I was so scared to, like, go to a real college. Yeah. Because I didn't want to, like, I wanted to go to Columbia downtown when I was a kid. I, I wanted, because I wanted to do stuff in film and I art I wonder and stuff. where the money really flows, because the professors aren't getting paid crazy. You Oh, dude, those, like, they, the, some the, of them are? The big time ones? Yeah. Yeah. They get, like, I mean, you can. They'd have to be billionaires from. <laughs> from the billionaires. Club. I mean, they, they they do well. Six just figures for sure. Micro Jeff Bezos just <laughs> in every university. Yeah. Just all they have tea. to do is talk for an hour. Right? I mean, it's kind of like stand up comedy. Uh, and the books are, you can buy the books. They're teaching you, they're reading out of a book. Yeah, but the book is only good for a year. And, and that's another thing is the shelf life of a college education, I hear, is like, and and don't quote me on this because I probably heard it from Joe Rogan. But sure, <laughs> sure. <yeah. laughs> he's not very quotable. <laughs> yeah, exactly. But you got to admit the, the shelf, like especially with medicine and certain, like that's an easy thing to reference of like technology and everything that's evolving daily. Rapidly. You know what I mean? Yeah. It's so it's so fast. Yeah. And so and, and what disturbs me is we always get all this stuff where it's like 
where they'll release things and be like, well, we knew about this 10 years ago, but now we're just not releasing it to the public. Uh, the fucking, oh God, I can't remember what, what just happened. They just found out something today that there's uh, Alzheimer's research yeah. was based on like everything for the last 13 years was based on this one study that a lot of people who work in Alzheimer's knew was was flawed at the least and fraudulent at the worst. And they just, it's finally coming out into like the public space that this, that was a grift. So yeah. like th you, there's fraudsters everywhere, dude. Oh my God. And it's like, you know, it's, it's, it's hard to know who to, who to trust. Yeah. It's hard to know. It's yeah. like, and that's what people like rag on like trust and Rogan was like, what are our options? You know what I mean? I mean it's like there are be there are better options. Than a UFC commentator for sure. I love Rogan. Yeah. He's he's fun to listen to. But I, you know, I'm gonna trust. I, so and that's where the people with the degrees. That's where I'm like. Well, we hey. need we need we need them to step up more outside of like yeah. Fauci because it's like. I, I, I have no, I, I'm like torn. You know what I mean? Where it's like, I go back and forth of like, all right, that sounds like it makes sense. It's like, you just contradicted yourself. So it's like, now it's like, it doesn't make sense. I mean, yeah. I'm who's, I'd I, rather have the horse medicine. I can't, I mean, and hey, the horse <laughs> medicine does work for some people. Yes. I think, and that's the whole thing with the ivermectin and all that shit. That's also just like the media. Like, that was no, so they're hilarious. not, they're not uh, suggesting you take the horse version of this. There's a human version of ivermectin that you could take and i'm not advocating for anything by the way we one way or the other are. don't quote me on this <laughs> but fuck you but uh but like it's like you know there's i think it's somewhere in the middle everyone has an agenda i i don't follow like the politics shit yeah. anymore i just i did for a long time i i filmed the protests in in 2020 i was out there in the streets with everybody like trying to you know see what was really going on get the message out and I'll, I'll say this. Some of the most beautiful speeches I've ever fucking heard. Yeah. Like those people telling their story, like the people who weren't there to, because there were people there to cause shit. Yeah. But the people who were there to be heard. Yeah. It was like some of the most moving shit I've ever heard in my life. Yeah. Um, but there's, there's that dichotomy, dude, where it's like, there's, there's two sides to everything. And it's, I, so I did all the political shit and now I'm just, I just want to be, I just want to be happy. Dude. Yeah, just peaceful. I just want to be. I just want to come home and fucking watch Stranger Things. And so good. You're not my caught up on Stranger go. Things. No, I, I finished. Oh yeah. Okay. Rewatch. Okay. I want to. I want to continue watching the new Game of Thrones. That's pretty good. Have you done, have you done the Rings of Power yet? I watched the first episode. Well, you said that kind of like sad. It's all right. Dude, I think it was fucking. I have low. You liked it? Yeah. Well, I I do this thing where I just like eat, like just proactively lower my standards so I can't be let down with like film and it's like probably shows. smart. So I'm like, oh, it's like I'm just like make up all this horrible shit in my head of like I ruin it. <laughs> sure. And then when I do watch something, I'm like, that was fucking. Oh no, awesome. that was a thousand times better than the horrible <laughs> version. Yes. I'll, I'll give you this. Uh, That's my only escape from work is movies and shows. Sure. Yeah. I won't do nothing else. I went. I went into. Because, like, I love Lord of the Rings. Like, it's one of the best movie franchises ever. Yes. And it's like, yes. I went into it going, well, how are you going to top that? Yeah. You shouldn't have thought about it like that. Do you like The Hobbit, too, or do you put that below Hobbit's the Hobbit's all right. Okay, it's, see. But there's nothing that's how better I know, than Lord of the Rings. That's, why, that's how I know you really love Lord of the Rings, because my like I love Lord of the Rings, but I don't love Lord of the Rings. So it's like one of my best friends who runs a little media company got, we got going on right here. Yeah. He is obsessed with the Lord of the Rings. And when I told him, I was like, well, I think The Hobbit's just as good. He was like, yo, fuck you. And I was like. <laughs> He's right. I was like, uh, but I do. <laughs> and the Hobbit's great. Benedict Cumberbatch as a dragon? Come on, dude. Yes, dude. Fucking that. insane. And I was like, as, as soon as, as, especially with like the graphics with the, I think for me, it was just, again, just lowering the standards and just it's like. Very beautiful. Uh, for me, it was just more of the immaturity of like, yo, dude, that's a, like a fucking live talking dragon. And that didn't happen in the Lord of the Rings. So it's like, that's where I just immediately connect to, sure. connect to that. The white orc, the fucking crazy, sure. crazy wolf. That was cool. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. it's like. And and then where they reference it in the Rings of Power with with right. you know what I mean? I mean so Galadriel's like, a main character. So yes, like dude. that was cool. Yes, I don't know. I just I'm gonna I'm gonna keep watching it. Yeah, you I'll, got to. I'll stay. But do you like House of the Dragon then more? House of the Dragon's good. That yeah. fucking uh, uh, God, what the fuck is the guy's name? Matt something. The like the main dude that not, plays not the king, but the brother that plays Damon. Damon. Yeah. Jesus Christ, that guy can act. I think he's awesome. He's the, so good. The fuck, my my boy, he's like, yeah, he ain't that good. I Your boy's like, wrong. I was like, dude, 
He's fucking great. He's the man. He was like, well, I wish there. What, what else? What else did he play in? He was in Morbius. Okay, that's why he don't like him because he didn't like <laughs> no, Morbius. I love him. He didn't like Morbius. Oh, he didn't like. Yeah, Morbius. so he didn't like Morbius. So he's well, Morbius is bad. I like Morbius. <laughs> <laughs> No, you did not. Yeah. You did not like Morbius. So, this is the clip. Him saying that he likes Morbius is the fucking clip. Yes. Dude. So, oh you guys God. have to understand. Oh I don't God. do anything else. So it's like if if I'm not working, <laughs> move like if a movie isn't good, I've literally wasted an hour and a half you or two hours of my day. Many movies there are. I've seen all of them. Morbius? Yeah, I've seen. Oh, bro. <laughs> Every, like it takes a really horrible movie for me not to. What like did you it. like about Morbius? I just like that they were vampires. You know what I mean? Like you're so easy to please. Yeah, it's amazing. when it comes to movies, dude. Like, and and even honestly, I'm I'm I wonder like for like stand up comedy, I, I got to get out more to do stand up comedy. That's yeah. that's one thing I should do more because I probably have low standards there too. Where it's like people will be like, "Do you hear this new comedian?" And I'll probably like, "Yeah, he's fucking awesome. I'm gonna be the next Kevin Hart, Joe Rogan, whatever." Sure. Someone's gonna be like, "No, he sucks." You know what I mean? <laughs> sure. And honestly, it's kind of bad though. And another reason why I won't go to too much stand up comedy is because I'll say something and a few people will laugh, and I'm like. Oh, maybe I should do an open mic. And it's like, you should try it. No, I haven't. <laughs> you have a fucking podcast. It's like the next step is every podcaster has to try a comedy. Yeah, that would be, dude, that'd be great content. I try an open should mic. Should he do it? You think he should do it? I yeah. try an open mic. He's, he's nodding. And bring a few people from the office and they have them heckle me, just like plan them there. Nobody knows. That's how it starts. Get off the stage. That is how every career starts. You suck here and at your job. <laughs> I mean, that's, so what you need to do is Monday night, you need to take 10 people you know, you need to go to Trigger Warning yeah. in Lakeview and get fucking roasted. And you're going to love it, too, because the people who run that that room are great. Yeah. But that's that's how every comedy career starts. You take a bunch of your friends to an open mic. I'm going to lower their commission you think it, I mean, <laughs> whatever you got to do. But that's if you at, at the very least, I think you should. Uh, we're surrounded by it. You yeah. can't escape it in Chicago. Like, it's yeah. everywhere. And it's so much fun. Yeah. Even the bad shows are fun. And there's a lot of bad shows. Most shows are bad, but like they're only like, but that's what makes them good. Yeah. Cause they're fun. It's like a fun time. If you can get around, like if a, if a comic is bombing, I love a bomb. I love a good bomb. Dude. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Just the awkwardness. Just a room clearing <laughs> fucking no noise, like a silent bomb. Is, oh my god! It sounds it's so one of awkward. the most masochistic fucking. Have you watched a, a bomb? You have. You've had to have watched a bomb. Uh, I mean, I've seen like open mics. Yeah. Yeah. So you've somebody seen bomb. Mics. You've had to see somebody bomb. You, you can't ten for ten on open mics over here. I mean, dude, like, yeah, it's go go to go to a mic if you want to. If you really want to know what comedy is, you have to go to open mic. I mean, I got a lot of funny stories from from the insurance industry of like I bet. We, we used to sell in home, so a lot of like a door to door, door to door, people pulling their dicks out. You know Fun. what I mean? Monkeys, like full grown chimpanzees. Talk about it on stage, chained dude. up in a house. That's where in Nebraska. Did you get chimpanzees in Nebraska. Somebody had a chimpan, oh albino chimpanzee chained up. It's actually one of our more viral clips because I, I was explaining the whole story and it, yeah. it's an insane. It's like, it makes me scared. I think of the the Family Guy monkey when it, the, the kid <laughs> right, is, it just rips the house house apart. Yes, yeah. yes, dude, hilarious. You could talk. You could talk about that on stage. The stories. I feel like that would be my go to if I had to if I had to do something. You'd be a storyteller comic. Storyteller. Okay. All the stories. That's that's Sam. That's what Sam does. He's yeah. a storyteller. Yeah. Yeah. I would do that. Yeah. What about you? Well, uh, my what about me? What like my favorite kind of comedy? If you had to go up there, rock it. Oh, what are you Jesus. doing? I fucking uh, getting off stage immediately. Huh? Yeah, I've done I've done three open mic sets in my life, uh, and that's kind of what I found out. Oh, maybe I should do everything else. I should do what he's doing. Yes. Uh, and I God, what did I talk about? I can't even remember what I fucking. I know the first open mic set I ever did. It was the last Edge show ever before the theater closed. So I just roasted all the comics. Like there's a comic, Leah Berman. Uh, she sold. She was the one who was like selling all of us weed, and so I like roasted her weed, and I like, oh, you're fucking, you're stupid. Like your set sucks. You're fat. Like oh, it's just horrible shit. Yeah. <laughs> and then the set, the, the next two sets I did, I can't even remember what I fucking did, uh, because it was not memorable. <laughs> it just yeah. wasn't good. Yeah, yeah. I don't know. I'm not a storyteller for sure. Maybe one liners. I'd probably find some one liners. Like think of some some quick shit. But I'm not a storyteller. Yeah. No. No. I just don't have I don't have stories worth telling. I'd love to 
Dan had a really good bit. I'm not going to say it, but he had a really good bit. He came in, just aggressively sat down, made a reference to the, to the, to the studio setup. Yeah. It was hilarious. So, what about the next five, ten years? What's that look like for you? Well, hopefully, uh, the people like the special enough in the industry to hire me. Yes. For stuff, for more stuff. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I don't know. I, I would really like to, you know, as part of the whole don't move thing that I've been Build telling people. Build this shit up, dude. And stay here. I don't, I don't plan on, on moving. Yeah. I want to stay in Chicago. I want to. I, I hear Rogan's trying to build something out in Austin. Like he's a got it. He's got a theater uh, that he's that he's working on. It's it's. I know he owns it already. I think they just got to do work. It's on a little it. easier with a hundred million to work with. Yeah, I would. I would think so. Yeah, yeah. That makes things not difficult. I don't want to be the one to say. I don't. I, you know, I hate when people are like, "It must be nice." So it's like I'm not saying it must be nice because I mean I'm, he did the work. I know that dude's put in work. Put in the work. Put in work. So and, he, like, and he doesn't stop working either. He has, never. He has a hundred jobs. So is, I think is it. I think I, I watch a lot of Tom Segura. I think I think he he's like a nonstop motherfucker too. Yeah. Oh yeah, big time. You know what I mean? He's just always on his shit yeah Tommy. and they're all boys seguro bill yeah, burr all the austin people yeah, yeah and then yeah and, and burr they're always working i mean you have to yeah you have to stay ahead of everything and they have glorious stories like and it's always you want to like talk about a storyteller bill burr is the best storyteller of all yeah. time yeah by an uncountable I th- margin well i think it was paper tiger i think is yeah. special that shit was fire the black and white one yeah oh no that's walk your way out uh, uh I, I thought paper tiger no paper tiger is have uh, you seen that one was it black and white? I, don't know. I, can, I'll see the black I think Walk Your Way Out is the black and white one. But, I mean, Burr is, Burr is a fucking master. And I loved his latest special, by the way. The content was, I mean, it's bar none. I was on a special kick, and then I went and saw Rogan again live. That's my second time seeing him live. And I was yeah. like, dude, the live experience is so much better where it almost makes me not want to watch specials because I just want to be there. Sure. But I don't like going out. Well, that's... So when I shoot a special, like, I I agree with you. Yeah. Um, and so many specials nowadays are shot. Uh, here's a little sauce for you. A lot of specials these days are shot to be a, a, a spectacle. Like, they have the cameras on the jibs, the flying cranes. Like, like It looks like a football game sometimes. There's just cameras flying around the room. And I don't like that. Because when I watch comedy, like, I want to watch the comedian. Yeah. I want to feel like I'm there. There, yeah. So, and and not just Sam. Like, I shot Sam um, in every special I've done to feel like you're there. Like, I, it's, it's important to be, like, immersion... You know, VR, like the way that the, the, the entertainment and, the, you know, the digital space is going, like VR is the next big thing. It's, I yeah. think, I still think everyone's like, no, it's dumb, it's over. It's not. No. Like, give it 10 years, the yeah. Zoomers are going to come and be like, no, VR rips. And the Zoomers are going to take over the, the, yeah. you know, the, the landscape and VR will be everything. I never um, thought of that because I got an Oculus somewhere in here. Can you Netflix on Oculus? I'm sure you can. It's, it won't be 3D, but like, but that immersion, it, like it, there's nothing else going on. So you're yeah, just in bro. it. And like, I mean, I'd love to watch. That'll be a game changer for specials. Th- there's a guy, uh, Sam Norton. He's a, he's a former Chicago comic. He's in Toronto now. He shot his special at Laugh Factory in VR, in full 360. So you could turn so is around. Is he still a comedian or is he just? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, he's yeah. A former Chicago. So maybe he's just in Now he's place. in Toronto. Okay. Um, but he's, yeah, he's still doing comedy. And he shot his special at Laugh Factory with a 360 degree camera. So you can watch, like, you could turn your head. And you can see the people sitting next to you. That's insane. And then turn back up. And, and yeah. by the way, all one shot. So it wasn't edited. A bunch of different shows edited together. It was one show. What kind of camera? One take. I, can't, I have no idea what they okay. shot it on. That's insane. But like, so, but there's that immersion aspect that will eventually, you know, maybe not now. The technology is still not quite, quite there. There's yeah. something called the screen door effect with a lot of these headsets where you, like, you can kind of see the, the pixelation a little bit. So it doesn't feel totally real yeah but once they figure out screen door effect which is really just making the pixels denser per eye so it looks like it's indistinguishable from real life then there's no reason to not do that yeah then you should at least you should uh, what i would do is i would shoot a special regularly so we did seven cameras for sam all around the room yep and then i would just add a 3d camera in the front row center and just have that what's the coolest piece of equipment you've worked with 
Um, I have That's a, a broad question because there's so many different things. Piece of equipment. I mean, we had. I mean, I have. I own it. Uh, it's a Steadicam rig that I built for myself. It's my profile picture on uh, on Facebook and Instagram. But it's that. Uh, you know, it's so Steadicam. For those who don't know, it's like a, when you hold a camera, you can hold it handheld, or you can put it on a what's called a gimbal, yeah. so that balances the camera on three axes, three axes, and then uh, you mount that to an arm that comes that's mounted to you uh, with a vest. So no. you're not taking all the weight of the kit because it's like 30, 40 pounds of equipment. Yeah. So the vest is like mounted to you, and then you can kind of just control it. It looks like a fucking, it's like a Gatling gun from like Alien or something. Yeah. Like Vasquez when she gets, gets yeah. off the fucking ship. Like yeah. it feels like that. So I and I run that Steadicam rig at every gig I I do now. Yeah, um, you feel like the fucking Terminator. <laughs> it's great. Yeah, um, but yeah, and then I run, uh, yeah, I run Black Magics, Black Magic cameras uh, on that. It's a it's a really it's a very inexpensive. Like you wouldn't believe how much this it costs. It's not expensive at all. Yeah, to to run. Um, but I, I'd say the Steadicam is probably the best piece of equipment. What is your favorite special you've seen in person, and then also fucking online too? My favorite, my favorite set or special? Yeah. Okay, set. my favorite set. Um, my favorite set in person, probably Joe McMahon's album recording, and no one will ever hear it because he won't let me release it. So there's a there's an all timer. Like not just Chicago, but like global all timer comedian named Joe McMahon. Yeah, who was in Chicago for a while. He got uh, JFL. So JFL just for laughs, which is the biggest comedy festival in the world. Every comedian like it's one of their dreams to you know about JFL. I'm sure uh, it's just one of their dreams to get on JFL is, yeah. is to be a new face. Yeah, yeah. And that's where you go to get you go to Montreal and you get discovered. The whole industry is there. It's a big party for a whole week. And McMahon got JFL, like, and he crushed at Montreal too. He had like the set of the night. This is back in like 2016. All the all the fucking like industry people were talking to him. So I heard I wasn't there, but then he's, and then we recorded an album uh, called McMahonette after Nanette, which is I don't know if you that might be too deep a cut. It's a special that no one should watch. But uh, we recorded this album. And at uh, at comedians you should know, and I, it's infuriating that no one will ever hear this. It's the funny. I listen. I have all the shit. Yeah, I'm the only one on earth who gets to listen to this. It's like such a privilege. It's the best. It's the best hour of comedy. Is he waiting for something or just? It just. It just. I don't know. Personal preference. He's just being personal preference. It's it's just Joe being Joe. And I, I would never pressure him to put it How's out. How's he doing now? He's killing it. Yeah. He's making a he's, he's making a shitload of money, I think, doing insurance stuff, actually, in New York. Uh, so he doesn't do comedy? Um, he does. He did, <laughs> he did do a set. He did do a set. I, went, I, was, uh, I was filming. There's a, uh, a global sensation now. Uh, do you know who Uncle Roger is? I don't know. It sounds familiar. Uncle Roger, um, he's a he's a Malaysian dude named Nigel Ung, uh, Nigel N G, uh, former Chicago comedian, turned food critic. And he's got like ten million on Mister Nigel Ung. Yeah, uh, is him on YouTube. Ten million followers across all platforms. Crazy. And like he's from Chicago, and I got linked up with him this year, and I filmed him in. Uh, he flew me out to New York to film at Gramercy Theater. Yeah. Crushed. Did, it, his act is incredible. I think he's going to film a special this year. Um, and he knows Joe. <sighs> I'm not going to do the bit because I don't want Joe to get in trouble. But he's, <laughs> he did this bit to Nigel's audience, uh, which is mostly Asian. Yeah. And they loved it, by the way, in case anyone is wondering. He, he murdered with it. Uh, he did a he did a joke and it was one of the funniest fucking jokes I've ever seen. Joe McMahon needs to come back to comedy right now full time. He's so fucking funny. Yeah. Um, yeah, I think that's that's the long road to getting to Joe McMahon is my what, favorite. What hour. about the 
favorite in person you've seen? That was that was my favorite in person. Shit. Well, was, what about the favorite one you you've watched and special wise on? Aside from so my favorite special that I've ever seen. God, don't make me put that on wax. That's fine. Mine's the, I think it's the Eddie Murphy one, the old one where he's Delirious wearing, or raw? He's wearing a purple. He's, That's delirious. He's, it's, he had to have been in his 20s. He was wearing like a purple leather. I think raw was red. He was he's wearing, wearing red and raw. Have you seen that special? Delirious, I think he's wearing purple. I mean, yeah. it's hilarious. And, and the shit he's saying in there, you could not get it. Delirious is his today. first one. So it's... And that's, I think, Delirious, I think, is the better one, too. Because Raw, they just put Raw on Netflix. I watched a little bit of it last night. It's been fucking 20 years since I've seen that. Delirious. Um, Oh, see. Oh, I think it was Delirious. Yeah. Delirious is. Yeah, I think it was Delirious. Yeah, man. I mean, that's that's an all time. That's got to be up there. I really like the the Bill Burr. But again, I got. I haven't. I don't think I've. I've really probably only seen a bunch of Netflix ones. Like, so I don't know. That's fine. They're putting else? all the classics on Netflix yeah, too. They're so putting a really, lot out there. There's a lot. I like. I go through there and I'm like, dude, a lot, a lot of these people are funny. Obviously, it's on Netflix. Yeah, so it's like they probably really vet There's it. There's some unfunny people on Netflix. Too. Yeah, some of but, them. Uh, you know, but uh, especially when I watch some goats on there, I'm like, oh, yeah. dude, that's hard to live up to. It's like you're. you're oh funny. yeah, I mean, killing him softly, Dave Chappelle. I think is the best special that exists. Yes, HBO. Chappelle is a fucking baby. He's yeah. like, he's like, I think he was. He wasn't 18. He was like between 18 and 21, I think, for killing himself. I mean, the fucking the the crackhead baby on the corner joke. Fucking like, did, there's so many just absolute bangers in that special. Have you seen that one? Kill them I, softly. I feel like I have. Please, I gotta please get back watch into that it. one again. Yeah, like th- there's, yeah, man, that was back when Dave. I think that was the one. I mean, I don't want to speak for him, but it, that was the one where it looks like Dave figured out that he was the greatest. And I, I really think Dave may go. He may he's on my Mount Rushmore for sure. Yeah. But uh he's it's hard to call anyone the goat because everyone's great for different reasons. Like Carlin's the best storyteller. Chappelle is one of the best joke writers. Um but yeah that was when yeah it's killing him softly man. That's yeah. a that's a fucking like how can you not at least in everyone's top three, if you're a comedy fan, like killing him softly has got to be in there. Yeah. Yeah. So Absolutely. good. So good. So as we wrap up, I kind of like to get an idea. What's your favorite movies? Top three. Favorite movie. Jurassic Park is the best film ever made. You like the OGs? Hands you probably down. don't like the new ones. I didn't even see the last one. I, I did not want to be disappointed. Uh, did you see the last one? I liked it. <laughs> You like you liked Morbius. Yeah, that's so, such a low bar. I like dude. all the Jurassic Parks. That's fine. You can like you like what you like. That's fine. But so Jurassic, Jurassic Park, Park is number one by such a. I just got this dope Jurassic Park vintage tee. Nice, that's dope. Hell yeah, like dude. the original. So it's definitely yeah, yeah, yeah. Way more all respectful. faded and shit. Yeah, hell yeah, it's fucking sweet. Yeah, Jurassic Park rips. Um, I think uh, it's a it's a toss up between uh, semi pro and old school for the best comedy. Ever made? Yeah. Um, I just semi pro is just the silliest fucking movie. I've got to, I think I've seen some. Will Ferrell plays basketball. Andre three thousand. Yes. Yeah. So fucking good, dude. Um, and then uh, yeah, semi pro. So you got it. You got it. <laughs> on Netflix. I might. I might. Fucking back. love me sexy is one of the best songs ever written. Yeah. Uh, but yes, it's, it's just a fucking <laughs> Will Ferrell's like got a. Uh, never mind. Just watch. Watch semi pro. Uh, and then, uh, I think, uh, fucking, I mean, I can't, I'm, I'm on the spot. I like the anchor man. I would imagine anchor man is good. Um, but top three of all time, uh, Jurassic park, <laughs> semi, what a stupid list, semi pro. And, uh, I got to sound smart. I don't know. Uh, 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 yeah, I can't. I can't think. Those are solid. There's, it's, it's yeah, those good, are solid too. Good ones. What about like top two or three favorite shows? Shows. Um, what do I always watch? It's shows is such a weird thing now because podcasts exist. Yeah, it's like I'm I'm watching podcasts more and more. I don't know. I think I'm well. Okay, Breaking Bad is like the most beautiful show. Did you like the movie that followed up? What was that called? El Camino. El Camino. It was good. Yeah, it was all right. It was good. Breaking Bad is phenomenal. Breaking though. Bad is amazing. Um, the Sopranos and 
I mean, Sam has told me to watch Mad Men. I still haven't watched Mad Men yet. I kind of watched that. Have you watched Mad Men? Uh, I thought it was kind of boring, honestly. Yeah, I watched the first episode, and I was like, this is... See, I only got like halfway through The Sopranos. Give give The Sopranos a chance. Yeah? Please watch The Sopranos. See, I got like halfway I'm through it, and I'm like... begging you to watch The Sopranos. Like, when is someone going to die? You haven't gotten to... Did you get to the one where he goes to the trailer to find the guy with the what? The I the farthest I got that's like, like episode six. No, I think like they like he was just getting raided or something, and they had to like hide shit in the ceiling. And I was like, "You got you, you got to finish the Sopranos, dude." Yeah, I was like, <laughs> "Please finish the Sopranos." Yeah. It's yeah, top. It's it's between that and Breaking Bad. For, like I can't even. I, sometimes I can't even decide. But yeah, and then uh, I'll say, not Game of Thrones because the last three seasons were terrible. They really fucking bungled that one. I liked him. Um, of course you did. <laughs> did you really like that fight that you couldn't see any of because it was in pitch black? That was great. Yeah, it wasn't what bad. A, what an amazing production. I just saw a dragon. Yeah, you like, saw, yeah for two seconds yeah, when he like, blew fire and yeah. then it was black. And then you couldn't see anything. Uh, <laughs> what the fuck's going on? Yeah, I think, yeah, those two at the very least. Um, yeah. The Wire. The Wire was good. Yeah? Watch The Wire. What's The Wire? Uh, Baltimore drug trade. It's like every season is a different layer of the drug trade in Baltimore. So like season one is like the street level gangs, like selling the drugs. And yeah. it's a story about those kids and like how they progress through life. Yeah. Season two is the docks. So like where the drugs come from overseas. It's the Russian people. I think it's Russian mob. Um, and then like, uh, season three, I think is the more, more court procedural stuff. Season four, uh, is like back on the streets kind of street level stuff. Um, it follows all the same characters throughout every season, but it just shows you different uh, insight into like, yeah. the levels that go into both the, the drug trade itself and then trying to stop it. Yeah. Um, so, but yeah, the wires, the wires great. Yeah. I th- that's a solid top three. Um, the boys. No, the boys is number three. Oh, fuck yeah. The boys is yeah, number the three. The boys are solid. It's fucking so good. Dude. Boys are solid. Anthony Starr needs like, they need to give him an Oscar, even though he can't win one because it's a show. Yeah. Just give him an Oscar. What are you doing? Yeah. He's one of the best actors of our generation. Yeah, that's fire. So good. And then as we wrap up, do you have like a favorite dish, a favorite food, or a favorite restaurant? Uh, Chicago's Pizza has the best burger in the world, guaranteed. See, I always hear, everybody loves the burgers. I gotta, I, I forget where I just went. Let me look this up. Chicago Pizza. Chicago's Pizza. Where's this? Um, the North th- Clark Street? Three locations, yeah. There's one on Clark. There's one on... Uh, there's Are they one. all pretty consistent? Yeah, they're all consistent. But yeah, I, I order their burger. Uh like when I when whenever I'm about to go on the road, I'll always the my my leaving Chicago meal is is the the build your own burger with with onion rings on it, uh, with fucking mushrooms on it, bacon on it. There's nothing like it. They used to put the they used to put fried jalapenos on there too. It was yeah. Like, oh my fucking god. But yeah, Chicago's Chicago's pizza uh, has the best burger. Um, Lou Malnati sucks. Worst pizza. Don't eat uh, Professor Pizza. G- what about Giordano's? It's okay. The best pizza in Chicago is Professor Pizza. Have you had Professor Pizza? No. Professor Pizza is a guy named Anthony Scardino. He's won multiple global pizza championships, which I didn't know was a thing until didn't I know. met him. I'm screenshotting this. Uh, does, he do, does he do a deep dish? He, uh, he does a grandma style, which is a pan style. He doesn't do a traditional Chicago deep dish yet. But he, everything he, t- he gives, like, he's done, he does pizza for comics. Yeah. So, like, any, like he's done pizza for Gaffigan. He's done pizza for uh, Andrew Santino. He did pizza for Sam. Yeah. Like, he's Professor Pizza. If yeah. you live, if you live in Chicago proper, you have to be in the city limits, preferably the north side. You, you are out of your mind if you don't get Professor Pizza at least once. It's. He, I swear by he's he's a good friend. So there's a little nepotism. Yeah, but I I, I will my put my life, my wife's life, all of our lives, yep. on him being the best pizza in Chicago. Let's go, Professor Pizza. Professor Pizza. <laughs> <laughs> Tony, let's fucking go. Yeah. So, anything else you want to add? I can't think of anything else. This is a solid hour. Yeah, um, yeah. Thanks for having me. Thanks for coming on. Uh, yeah, buddy. Yeah, Dope. that's it. Uh, if you want to follow me, I guess uh, my Instagram is at the Chicago Pro. 
Um, I'm you see a lot of pictures of things I shoot and my dogs. So that's pretty Let's much go. it. What kind of dogs we got on here? Uh, you know, some Australian cattle dogs. They're that's great. Go. They're great. Dope. Another episode of Adversity Kings. James Webb closing in on episodes. Hundreds. We're in the hundreds now. Congrats, so, man. Yeah, thank you, brother. Hell yeah. Thank you. Absolutely. This so, was fun. Keep it going. It was. Yeah, it was. Good time.